So reports are coming out that the ATF is defying multiple injunctions and now is going after people who possess pistol braces and then also force reset triggers. So let's talk about what is going on. But real quick before you jump this video, if you think the ATF needs to be abolished, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. As I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we will be discussing some concerning news that has come out over the last couple of days in regards to the ATF and their enforcement of some of their rules. There have been some reports that the ATF has gone after a member of NAGR who was in possession, I believe, of an FRT trigger. And this action came just days after NAGR received a preliminary injunction from Judge O'Connor in the NAGR v. Garland lawsuit. That preliminary injunction prevented the ATF from enforcing the FRT rule against NAGR and all of their members. There's also news that broke that the ATF went after an FFL and an owner because they had some braced pistols in their possession. And again, this is despite the fact that the FFL and the owner are a member of both FBC, the organization, and then also NAGR, who both have preliminary injunctions issued by Judge O'Connor, which is supposed to prevent the ATF from enforcing that rule against those organizations and again, all of their members. And in that specific case, in regards to pistol braces, when the ATF supervisor was notified of those two cases, that the FFL owner was a member of those organizations and therefore is covered by those injunctions in those lawsuits, the ATF supervisor essentially responded by saying that they do not have to follow what Judge O'Connor said in that decision, that that district court decision is not binding on all the other courts. So to do some background on what's going on here and what essentially the ATF has done in response to some of these injunctions, if you're not aware, back in July of 2021, the ATF sent a cease and desist letter to rare breed triggers. In the letter, the ATF claimed that in their eyes, the rare breed FRT-15 force reset trigger meets the NFA and GCA's definition of a so-called machine gun. In the letter, the ATF told rare breed to cease and desist the manufacture and transfer of the triggers and to contact them so they could figure out what they need to do with the triggers that have already been sold to some customers. Now, recently, the company Rare Breed Triggers partnered with NAGR, a two-way organization, to file a lawsuit against the ATF in the Northern District of Texas. This is a federal district court. On review, a federal district court judge, Judge Reed O'Connor, issued a preliminary injunction in favor of NAGR and all of their members, finding that under the Fifth Circuit's precedent in Cargill, in the Cargill bump stock lawsuit, that the force reset trigger rule is in fact invalid. In his order, Judge O'Connor ruled that plaintiffs are likely to succeed on the merits. Here, plaintiffs contend that the ATS regulation broadening the machine gun definition is an arbitrary and capricious expansion of the agency's authority. Plaintiffs are likely correct. Accordingly, the court concludes that plaintiffs have carried the burden at this stage to show that the expanded definition of machine gun likely exceeds the scope of the ATS statutory authority. Therefore, plaintiffs have satisfied the arguably the most important of the four factors. Therefore, he issued the order enjoining the ATF from implementing and or enforcing the restrictions against NAGR and again, all of its members. Interestingly, in my last video covering the FRT preliminary injunction, I did warn everyone to be very careful and proceeding forward on this whole FRT issue because the ATF has been very aggressive in going after the people who are in possession of these items. Multiple times the ATF has shown up. There have been multiple videos of the ATF showing up at people's doors and trying to confiscate these items, um, questioning people about these items. And so the concern was that the ATF would not stop despite even this injunction. Well, it seems like my concerns were 100% correct and were warranted. We received a report from NAGR and the president Dudley Brown that a member of NAGR was contacted by the ATF who notified that individual that they would be coming to the individual's home to confiscate and find out about that FRT. And for those curious, this is all happening in West Virginia. Now, in response, NAGR and their attorneys contacted the ATF, notifying them of the Judge O'Connor injunction. NAGR also sent a representative from their organization to the home of this individual with a camera, just in case the ATF did show up and tried to maybe confiscate or question this individual about this item. Ultimately, the ATF did respond, I believe, to NAGR by saying that they were not aware that this one specific person was a NAGR member, and they have no way of knowing who is a member unless the organization here, NAGR, gives the ATF a member list. So they were essentially asking this toy organization to give up their membership list, which I believe in response, the NAGR, um, probably in different terms, and what I'm going to say is essentially told them to shove it. Now, we still don't know fully how the ATF will proceed forward on this specific issue in this one specific individual, but it clearly shows that the ATF is still going to be going after people in possession of FRTs, despite the fact that there is an FRT injunction. 
uh, likely what's going to happen is the ATF is again, kind of in this situation, going to play dumb. They're going to go after people and say, well, we didn't know they were a member. How could we ever know they were a member unless you give them their membership list? Unless you want to give up the membership list, maybe the ATF, their strategy right now is to try to strong arm and still go after people to maybe try to get access to those memberships. Now, in a different issue on pistol braces, we received a report that an FFL owner was contacted by the ATF about being in illegal possession of various items. The owner contacted his ATF representative to let him know that all these items were in fact legal. The only potential questionable items could be the braced pistols that were in his possession. Some, I believe, were registered even under the pistol brace rule, but some, I think, were not. However, the owner told the ATF, his representative, the field office representative, that his possession of them is in fact covered by two different injunctions in two different lawsuits. First, he is a member of FBC and therefore covered by the Mock v. Garland lawsuit, which enjoins the ATF from enforcing the rule against all FBC members, again, all FBC members, including the individuals and business members. He is also a member of NAGR, which means he is covered by a second preliminary injunction that protects all members of NAGR. So he's kind of double covered by the injunction. The owner went so far as to also send the decisions and the documents to the ATF representative. Then his field office representative sent it to his supervisor and the supervisor, I guess, reviewed it and then responded by saying that Judge O'Connor's decision are just from a lower court and not binding on other lower courts. So that was the response of the ATF, essentially saying we are not bound by this. Now, whoever this ATF supervisor is, I want to be very clear. He needs to stop talking about things that he does not understand. Now, technically, yes, a district court and a decision in one district court is not binding on another district court and maybe a different circuit. But that's not what we are dealing with here in this case. That is not what's in question with the ATF. The ATF is not a federal district court. The ATF is an executive agency who is directly bound by federal district court injunctions under federal law. This injunction under 5 U.S.C. Section 705, other federal rules of civil procedure, and so many other federal laws is directly binding on the ATF, the supervisor, and all of their agents. And here is a quote directly from federal law, and I quote, on such conditions as may be required and to the extent necessary to prevent irreparable injury, the reviewing court here, Judge O'Connor, may issue all necessary and appropriate process to postpone the effective date of an agency action or to preserve status or rights pending conclusion of the review proceedings. That is exactly what Judge O'Connor did here in the NAGR case and then also the Mock v. Garland case. He granted temporary relief to prevent irreparable harm until the conclusion of both of these cases. And although the ATF and this ATF supervisor may not like what the judge did, of course they don't like what the judge did because they want to be tyrants, the agency and this officer and these agents are still bound under federal statutory law by this court order. So we will have to wait and see how this all plays out, but I want to emphasize to all of you watching that although there are these injunctions in both the pistol brace case, these two injunctions, and then also in the FRT case, obviously the ATF is not going to listen. It seems like they're still playing some games where they're gonna say, well, how are we gonna know who the members are? We're still gonna engage in these actions. And then maybe if they're stopped after the fact, then they'll say, okay, we found out you're a member, we're not gonna do this. But it seems like it's not gonna stop them right now from still going after people. If you're a member of these organizations and you're covered by these injunctions and you're ever contacted by the ATF, although I'm an attorney, I'm not gonna give you legal advice, but I would recommend first for you to not talk to the ATF, go ahead, contact an attorney, and then also reach out to these two-way organizations, either FBC or um, NAGR, GOA, whoever maybe you're covered by, and let them know that the ATF is expressly trying to violate the injunctions and that they have contacted you in regards to maybe pistol braces or FRTs. The ATF has been very aggressive specifically when it comes to FRTs, so that's something we will need to keep our eyes on going forward. It doesn't seem like the ATF is going to stop, but it's also interesting that they're still trying to implement the pistol brace rule, even though there are these injunctions for members of these organizations. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below, and I will try to answer to the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and you would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm, and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.